A war of words across the aisle is nothing strange in Parliament, in the case of the British Virgin Islands, the House of Assembly. Yes, there is no doubt that members are cognizant of the fact that they are being viewed live by a wide cross-section of people, yet they rant on as they see fit. It's the real world of freedom of expression. No doubt this was the case when Minister for Education and Culture Myron Walwyn took a shot at switching gears while debating a motion for the appointment of a chairman to the Higher Education Licensing Board. How can you justify, Madam Speaker, I am on my feet. I am on my feet, Madam Speaker. Honorable, honorable, honorable. I am on my feet. Honorable leader of the opposition. Honorable Minister for Education and Thank you, very, thank you very much. I meant for you to take your seat, Madam Speaker. Oh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Then there was round two. Madam Speaker, what I'm discussing is pertinent to the debate. No, no I'm hearing you loud and clear, Honorable Minister and of Education and Culture. If I can be allowed to, Madam Speaker, I'd be very grateful if I can be allowed to just finish what I'm saying. Because I don't understand what this is about. Honorable Minister of Education and Culture, you can take your seat. But on a second round, Minister for Education and Culture Myron Walwyn was made to remain seated and opposition leader Andrew Foy was called to the floor to speak. Why? It was all because of Walwyn's plug on this issue. There's a company that came in here called Effect Inc., Madam Speaker, that walked away with $602,345.88 of the public's money for something that I did for free, for something that could have been done for free. And I want people to look in to see who Effect Inc. is, because there's more in the matter besides the pistol. That issue, Foy thought, had no place in the debate at the time. The minister cannot direct the Public Accounts Committee, and this is the second consecutive term. But I understand what this is about, Madam Speaker, but I want the government to know that this time will not end like the last time. This, Madam Speaker, I want to quote something for this Honorable House. I want to quote it on the point of information so you could understand, Madam Speaker, that the Minister was not part of the process. There was a tendering process, Madam Speaker, a competitive bidding, and there was a direction the government was going. If he shifts the direction, it's fine. But he can use the 2004 Education Act, which we worked on, that allows the legislation to come in, which was worked on by the same Minister. But, Madam Speaker, I want to sit with one last quote, Madam Speaker. For the Honorable Member to suggest this, Madam Speaker, would mean that the Permanent Secretary, who is the Accounting Officer in the Ministry of Education, the Assistant Secretary, and all who are responsible for dealing with it, Madam Speaker, would be saying that there were this, dishonest persons. I get that quote from the same member who was talking about the wall. The matter that escalated into a tit-for-tat relates to allegations of Foy, while Minister of Education in a previous government expending some 600000 in consultancy for the possibility of setting up a medical school in the Virgin Islands. A similar scenario, Walwyn said he's not spending a cent to do.